Good morning, traders. Chris Buss here with Traders Profit Compass with another edition of Before the Bell, your home for actionable pre-market content for Wednesday, August 24th. It is 6.40 a.m. as I'm starting the video. And as always, please run your player at 1.5x. Uh, jumping into futures real quick, uh, um, mostly flat across the board on, on equities. Uh, I have oil up seven tenths, nat gas up 1.4%. Over on macro, we've got oil inventories this morning at 1030. Uh, and we've also got durable goods orders and pending home sales uh, this morning as well. Uh, tomorrow before the bell, we've got a GDP print. And also, of uh, course, being Thursday, we've got uh, jobless claims. Uh, some high-profile names tonight after the bell on earnings. Uh, I've got NVIDIA, uh, Salesforce, CRM, Snowflake, Autodesk, and Splunk as uh, more of the marquee names. Uh, of course, uh, you may be tracking other names. You can go look that up. Uh, earnings Whispers is a good site to get a rundown of, uh, you know, a complete list of everything that's reporting today or, or any other time. So let's, let's dive into the charts. Uh, going to keep dollar in focus here for a while to see what's going to happen. Uh, over the last couple of days, we talked about the momentum resets at zero and the ramp up. Well, now we've put in, uh, what, could be a double top high. Uh, we've got two equal tops. And when we pulled back a, a little bit yesterday. So you can mark, you know, 109 on your U.S. dollar chart. Or you can find the comparable level on UUP. That's the tradable ETF um, linked uh, to the dollar, UUP. And then there's all kind of... Uh, adaptations of that there's a you know a short dollar a long dollar uh, you know 2x type ETFs and then of course you've always got uh, dollar futures but uh, if you're a futures trader you probably already know that so <clears throat> want to keep dollar strength and focus uh, remember as dollar goes higher liquid you know general global Liquidity goes down in a rising uh, dollar environment. Uh, really, same can be said here on TLT. When TLT is falling, rates are rising, liquidity is shrinking. Kind of an inter interesting day yesterday. Uh, TLT made a move and briefly went green but then more or less uh, closed back near the lows. So if you're in that short trade, I would stay short um, depending on where you got in and what your expiration might be. Um, you could possibly want to move down your stops like into the 114 area. You know, if you got short up in here, uh, 116 and a half, 116. If you wanted to, uh, you know, trail a stop, that would be fine. Or if you've taken a longer term view that we're going to go back down for a retest of these TLT lows, then you probably just want to uh, stick tight with uh, your longer term uh position. Moving on to the VIX, we have been talking about this well-defined downtrend line. <clears throat> and once it breaks above, it usually does not really spend a ton of time uh, either in a range or going back down again. Now we do have an open gap. We could get, you know, a rally to come back into support and then have it take off. But I think the next level to alarm on your long side is 25. I've gone ahead and put in some uh, 
different arrows along this line showing resistance and support. And you can see that going back in time, uh, quite a few reactions along that line of 25. And then that would be, you know, here's first confirmation of a VIX breakout, breaking out above the downtrend line. And uh, the next move above 25 should really send this thing going. Um, and I don't know if I mentioned it or not. Uh, please run your player at 1.5x. 1, 1. Uh, I don't speak particularly quickly, so that'll help you get through the material faster. On Bitcoin, I've uh, uh, put up the 60-minute chart just to get some granularity uh, versus the daily chart. And you can see we took this big $4,000 move down uh, here and now we've been consolidating over the last few days and we're here really pinned between 21 600 let's call it and 20,800 down at the bottom so if you were you know, and actively trading Bitcoin, those would be some levels that I would mark. Um, I think this is, even if you're not trading it, I think it's a good proxy for liquidity. And given this uh, big move here, we kind of lost that tra traditional bear flag look. This looks like more of a longer, flattish consolidation. Uh, you can see the volume over price bars give you a well-defined value range. And so if you're playing for bigger moves, I think waiting for a move out above the value range back into this void or below the value range into this void is the way to do it. Now, if you're super active, you can, you know, you can play ping pong in this uh, $750 range, you know, all day long and uh, more power to you if you can do that uh, successfully. Oil got a nice bid yesterday and you can see we've been talking about, uh, you know, potential support from this value area and the first move we were looking at for a a longer term bullish move on oil was the downtrend breakout and we got that yesterday and it stuck now the next hurdle is the 200 which is where it stopped right at resistance uh, 200 and that comes in at 94.66. So that can be a level that you can watch. And now that we're above the downtrend line, uh, oil is emerging and is now at least on the right side of the chart for bulls. Now, that doesn't mean it's game over. Still got to take out the 200. Still got to take out the 50. But... Uh, the indicators are moving up, not quite into bullish territory, but a definite, uh, definite turn up. And we're up about a percent here this morning. So we'll see how that goes. Our oscillators have crashed, gone from overbought to oversold. So be careful with your what I'll call gonzo shorts, you know, like your whole book um, short. You got to be careful here because as we've seen in the past, it can form a low here and then head back up the other way. NAMO, same thing, but not quite as dramatic. We didn't quite reach minus 60, but we're here at minus 50. So 
we'll see how that goes. But I mean, what I've done is, and I, I didn't have a, a ton short, but on the ones that I did, um, I've rolled those down to even money. Uh, did that, let's see, did that Monday at the close. And then yesterday was more or less a consolidation day. Uh, there wasn't any, it didn't seem to be any real need to, you know, hurry up and cover those. So we'll see how it goes today. But I've taken the meat off of those shorts with the oscillators uh, down here at the lows. Moving on to SPY. Uh, we broke our uptrend line. Now we're down into the meat of this big uh, support area. I think the uh, the real line to watch is 410 on the downside. You really don't want to lose that. Now, one thing that could happen is you notice the proximity of the 50 day, which comes in, let's call it 407. It's a little lower than that, 406.87. Um, you know, some kind of a breakdown that goes below 410, maybe with, you know, a big scary bar and then buy it back up to the 50. We've seen that before. But in general, what I would say is if and when SPY drops below 410, in my mind, now price has to prove it to me. Uh, this will turn back into resistance here. And so price would have to prove to me that it can get back through, you know, coming from Break back below, recapture 410, and then move higher. Uh, because all this will turn into resistance at this point. And notice on our indicators, PPO has put in a high-level bull cross and broken below trend. RSI has broken below trend, still not in the in the below 50s, but certainly heading in that direction. When we go to the 60 minute chart, this was the Monday gap down. This was the uh, gap up from back here. We haven't, we got close to filling it, but, but I, I think we're still a few pennies shy. I, I expect I expect a good test of this 410 at some point before we, you know, just turn around and bounce. I think from a technical standpoint, they're going to want to go down and give all this support a test right here. And what I would be looking for, because it's our first time really down here after the the run-up is just what I talked about, one of those hammer reversals where you get an undercut of 410 and then they buy it up and recapture it. If I was watching that and I saw a break below 410, you know, 408, 40750, 409, <clears throat> whatever it was. And then a break back above 410, I'd be a buyer there. Because that would that would fit the classic, you know, come down for a test, give you a scary undercut, and then start buying it up, and then um Uh, move back higher. So be aware of that potential move. 
As we move to QQQ, we can see that RSI has moved below 50. We see the high level PPO bear cross. We see that we uh, came above trend, came above the 200 in gold EMA. Now we've dropped back below the 200. That's never a good sign. We've dropped back below the downtrend line. Never a good sign. And we've dropped below this uh, 317.35 type area, uh, which was support. Now I've switched it over to resistance. So now uh, price is caught in this little range where you've got resistance above and you've got a good level of support below between this 310 and uh, call it 305, maybe a little bit below. You can see here there was activity. You can see here was a big congestion area. And we've also got this uptrend line coming off the uh, coming off the lows which would act as support for uh, price on a move back down. And I would expect um, uh, this would hold on its first try down at the bottom of this range. Just like on SPY, I would expect 410 to ultimately hold. But on the upside, uh, price is in that zone where it's got to prove it to me now. What does it have to prove? It's got to prove it can move back above this resistance. Recapture the downtrend line. Recapture the 200. And in my mind, that would uh, you know, put the Qs on much more of a secure footing. If it can prove it can get back above uh, all these key resistance areas. And here you can see it on the uh, 60 minute chart a little more clearly. We've got uh, a little bit of room down here to 312. We've got the overhead resistance area where now there's a pretty good size gap. And we've got the uptrend line coming off uh, the lows. So um, those give you some intermediate points to shoot against um, if the Qs uh, want to start moving. Uh, IWM uh, still technically holding it together. Why? Well, we're clinging to this uh, back test of the downtrend line. And so what you could easily uh, either see or say is uh, a breakout and a and a and a back test. If it can hold 190 and then bounce, you'd say you know breakout, uh, successful back test, and a bounce. So I think 190 is your key spot right now. And then you've got this high volume over price bar, uh, really the largest on, on this chart, where you're going to have support down in this uh, 186 to 188 area. And here you can see uh, where that 190 comes in. You've got a prior low back here. You've got a lot of resistance here. And now you've got a lot of support here. So I'm king off of 190. Um, if there's a break of that today, uh, I plan to take that short. Um, I think it's also very objective. If you got to move down to 190 and it held, you take a long there at support and look for a bounce up, even if it's just, uh, you know, a reaction bounce off of support, your first target would be this 
bottom of the gap at 192.35 and then uh, if you're lucky enough or good enough you'd get that that uh, gap fill all the way up to 194.65 and then that's where you'd run into resistance you know it was support here was resistance here was support here so the uh, top of the gap is going to be uh, if there is a bounce going to be an important area to look at um, and then if that scenario plays out you'd have yourself a really nice little day trade from the low 190s to 194 ish 194 and a half there's your four dollar intraday trade now if we break down from 190 my first target's going to be right in here at 187 uh where you had all these transactions back here where it was uh support so uh meta uh we talked about 172 being uh, key support we broke that on uh, Friday then we gapped down again on uh, Monday uh, and then yesterday we kind of dribbled lower the whole day so uh, this has fallen apart, you know, in pretty dramatic fashion, especially after it lost this 172. So if you're short from 172, trade it as you like. You're well to the good. What you could do is, <clears throat> uh, depending on where you got it, you could roll down to the midpoint at 168 or you can even roll down towards 160 and say okay I've gotten the meat of the move now uh, all my target is is going from basically 161 down to 155 at the bottom of the box and <clears throat> I can feel safe and secure that my hard-earned wins are in the bank right so you don't have to worry as much about some kind of crazy kickback rally but I think uh, uh, aside from any bounces I think meta is gonna find the bottom of the box at 155 uh, micro or excuse me Apple remains really resilient uh, sitting on the top of this gap from 167 down to 164.9 uh, you want to have that 167 alarmed for that gap fill and even potentially a move down to 164 at uh, that's going to be your next big level of support uh, but now we're below the uptrend channel and if we were to fill this gap you know, then I think uh, things will start moving downhill. And just as a reminder, Apple is 7% of the market. Um, I know it's 7% of SPY. It might be even more of the NASDAQ. I'd have to check that. But almost impossible to get uh, you know a catastrophe at the index level I mean it's the same thing that we've been saying like for years unless they crack mega cap tech they can't they can't crack the market they can take zoom down to zero and it won't affect quote the market It'll be a bad bear market for people in in those uh, bubble and Ponzi names. But if you're trading indexes, 
or mega cap tech, you're not going to have that big headline, uh, you know, bear market unless Apple and Microsoft and uh, a lot of those bigger names, Amazon, Google, break. Now they've started to break, but I mean, this is nothing. So uh, keep that keep that in mind, especially if you're a, a type of person that uh, wants to play indexes. Uh, just keep in mind the the bifurcation in the market, the you know mega cap versus everything else. So, uh, getting back to the matter at hand here, sitting on top of a gap, <clears throat> uh, have one sixty seven alarmed for a downside break. Uh, one stock that that bucked the trend yesterday was Tesla. Came in here at this. Uh, 860 where we had support and got a good bounce. I didn't I didn't uh, really track it closely, but I guess there was a lot of social media out there that uh, and some revelations on this Twitter case that might that well encouraged Twitter longs that Elon is going to win his case with Twitter. And then he's going to use all his excess cash that he took out planning to buy Twitter. Now he's going to put it back in and buy back all his stock. Um, I'd be careful watching those scenarios. But what I will say is uh, you don't have to worry about what's on Twitter. You just have to worry about the levels. Uh, This... 860 was a good support level to shoot against long and you got the move. Your second entry was into the gap. So if you didn't get it here, you got it here and then you got that uh, nice move. So now this uh, 885 is your support level and your pivot again today. As long as it can stay above, it can grind higher. If you lose 885, most likely you're going to roll back downhill to 860. Uh, Microsoft. Uh, dropped out of its channel. Uh, gap down. Uh, and has since kind of dribbled lower. Uh, I think, you know, below 278. I'd favor, uh, well, I think that's your pivot point. If you're short, I think you stay short against 278. You can see yesterday there were a couple probes up above that, but ultimately got rejected. Remember, this was a big line of support um, uh, while price was up here. But now now we dropped below that big level, now it's going to be resistance. So I've got a small short position on for Friday. And my stop is, uh, you know, right in this uh, like 278.25 type area. Um, but anyhow, now also this 290 area, which was support previously has toggled back to resistance. So, um, actually, uh, I wanted to point something out to you. I just saw it. Maybe I'll go into annotation mode just to show this to you. You don't see them that often, but, and I'll put it in red. Do you see the island top for you budding chartists? Notice a gap up, a consolidation, and then a gap down. 
And so, in essence, what it does is it leaves these people on an island with no way to get off. It's, you know, Gilligan's Island. You got on, you spent a lot of time up here, but the boat left without you. All these people know they're wrong. And it's it's a uh, it's a pretty bearish setup. Now you can get that on the on the other side as well. So what you can look up in your uh, Investopedia or any of your chart guides: island tops and island bottoms. The island bottoms would obviously be uh, bullish if you can get gaps on either side of the cluster. So anyhow, I favor lower for Microsoft uh, down below support, having the island cluster in place. And you can see that if we were to get down below, say 274, then you've got a lot of air in the charts down to $10 lower. Uh, Amazon sitting right on this big, big um, uh, gap and see here we would have the potential for another island top say this morning something were to happen and you get a big gap down and it opens at what well, anything 128 you'd have the gap on this side and then you'd have the gap on this side and then this area here would be your island top. So with this gap in place and yet to be filled, it leaves the potential for uh, an island top in uh, Amazon as well. But please have 132 alarmed in your charts for that $10 gap entry. Uh, Google has re-entered this value range from 115 that I have going down to 111. <clears throat> to me, that's the favored scenario is a move down. Once you go back into a value area, you usually go to the bottom of the range and retest it. So, uh, I think the trade here is staying short against 115 and see what happens. Uh, anything above 115, I would think would be caution area, uh, a caution area move. And uh, I would be stopping yourself out at that point. Netflix. I was very fortunate to get this big gap down on, uh, uh, what was that? Uh, must have been Monday. Then it moved lower and consolidated. So here we are at the large volume over price bar here. Um, I think moves below 222.50 will open this up for the next leg down, you can see that the bottom of the value range is down at 212.50. That's where I would expect it to go. Uh, notice here, we've also got one of those uh, other, uh, now I'm seeing them all over the place, the island top. Gap on this side, gap on this side, leaving the island intact um, right there. So, anyways, I'd have 222.50 alarmed on Netflix. Uh, SMH, down here at the large volume over price bar, uh, between 228 and call it uh, 227. And you've got a gap down at 225, down to 222. Some very good lines to have alarmed on the downside. And then you've got a gap up here at 231. If there's a 
uh, some kind of a bull move, you can get long at 231 and look for this gap fill up to uh, 235 on semis. Uh, ARC. ARC F found support here at uh, 17. 90 let's call it any break below that I think it's going lower I want to show you the daily you know now we're down inside this range we do have the downtrend line acting as a bit of support but below that I think we go back down to the um, um, low 14s arc G found support and got a lift let's look at the daily uh, still down below the old trading range so I would use 38 as a pivot point on the daily to take that long on a break above but as long as it's below I favor uh, move back down into this 34 first support Flagship fund, uh, pretty well-defined downtrend. Finding support here at the bottom of value. Uh, any breaks below, you can see support really starting to drop off. We're back down into this prior trading range. We do have an element of support right here with the downtrend line. But, uh, and then you've got the midpoint right here at 41. You could use those as reference points. Kind of muddies the water on just shooting for the bottom of the old range because this could act as support and the midpoint could act as support as well. So, uh, keep that in mind. And then Arc W coming into the midpoint, 5250, I think is your pivot. If it breaks that, then I think it's going to 46 uh, down at the bottom of the box with this uh, bull trap well in place. So um, let's see where we go. I don't know if the market is going to hesitate here. You know, as as GDP tomorrow and Powell on Friday back to back uh, get closer, or if there's going to you know more consolidation, choppy action over the next couple of days, or uh, we're going to break free on some kind of other uh, either news driven event, or if people get get skittish ahead of uh, Jerome Powell. So let's. As always, just trade level to level. But keep in mind that at least on the Qs, price has to prove it. It's down below uh, the critical support levels. And I would be watching 410, and one, 410 on SPY and 190 on IWM really, really closely. Because if those two get below... Uh, we already know the Qs are below. I think that would really kind of solidify uh, the thesis for uh, a next move down. So let's wrap it up there. This has been Chris Buss with Traders Profit Compass. Talk to you next time.